guys, welcome to chapter 5, section 2. And in this section, we're going to be talking about the web storage feature of HTML5. And what web storage is, is it enables us to store local data on a user's computer or a browser, uh, which we can retrieve later when needed. And we would use this for, say, a first and last name. If we want to display a welcome back message with the user's name, uh, web storage would allow us to do that. We could set the name, we could have the user type in the name in a form, and then we could retrieve it and display it. Maybe up in the corner you'd have a welcome back Bob or what, whatever, anything like that. Any kind of data like that. And it really, it, it aims to replace cookies. Um, JavaScript cookies up until now was really the only kind, the only way to have this kind of functionality, um, and web storage is much better than cookies. Uh, it differs from cookies in that it's more secure, it's faster, and it stores a larger amount of data. Cookies, uh, I think it's like four kilobytes, and web storage is going to allow us to use over five megabytes of storage on a user's machine so uh, much larger amounts of data and the reason it's so much faster is that the data it's not sent with every server request every page load like it is with JavaScript cookies it's only it only works when we ask for it when we retrieve it so that that allows us to do uh, much bigger and better things than with JavaScript cookies so Right now, all the latest browsers, uh, the latest versions of the latest browsers, they support HTML5 storage. Um, but you should still try to detect it because, like I've said before, there are, you know, your grandmother's computer or your uncle that isn't very tech savvy may still have IE8 or, or an older Firefox version of, of a browser. So it's good to detect for it so we don't, so we can just check for it and then run it if it's if it's supported and then do something else if it's not and we can do this two ways well there's more than two ways but I've, I have two ways here the two best ways one is with is to to um, create this function supports HTML5 storage and what it does is it tries to return local storage um, and, it, and if the window object and the local storage property are null then it returns false. And this is the try catch. I haven't really explained any of that. Um, and it's really beyond the scope of this. I would definitely recommend this with uh, using Modernizer. And I've used this in past sections. And it's much, much simpler if you look at the code. Uh, if modernizer dot local storage, you know, and uh, you can check for anything with modernizer, any kind of new HTML5 or CSS3 objects or properties. So I would definitely recommend going the modernizer route for this for detection. So there's two types of HTML5 web storage, and that is local storage and session storage, and the only real difference between these two is that session storage is destroyed once the user closes their browser. From the point of the browser opening to the point of the browser closing is called a session. So session storage is destroyed once it's closed. And local storage, however, stays on the local machine until the user or the programming code clears it out. Um, both types implement the same exact interface and the same exact structure. So there's my, very little difference in, aside from the length of time. So how does this work? With both local storage and session storage objects, they create a key value pair. So we can set the pair and then retrieve it when needed. Uh, an example would be we could have a key of name and then a value of Bob. Yeah, so they can come back and we can have a welcome Bob message or, or something like that. And it can be anything. We can store anything, but it's always stored as a string. It's initially stored as a string, but it's possible to convert it. But you'd need to use some JavaScript code and you need to use some JavaScript functions like parse int or parse float. 
So the syntax for web storage for both local and session storage uh, is very simple. It's much more simple than using cookies. And you can use local and session the same exact way. You would just replace this with session if you just wanted to set data just for one browser session. All right, now storing a value is very easy. And we can store them as either an object, which this would do, or an array value. Uh, I like working with object-oriented programming, so I would use the objects. Um, but you can use an array, too. So you can do the same things, really. Um, and then getting the value is as simple as using the get item method and you just have the key and so right here this this would be JavaScript uh, it would give us an alert with the name of the of the value in this particular key okay now removing a value is extremely easy it's just the you use the remove item function and then you can use this little line of code here to remove all values of all objects or yeah all storage objects So that's it for the web storage presentation. Now we can jump in and do a little programming. Um, I set up a small add-on project for our Blue Developer site just to enter our name and have it greet us um, when we leave the website and come back. Very simple, but it'll show you the core, the core functionality of the web web storage API.